Good morning and welcome to Live from Curry Tuck Extension. My name is Adam Formella. I'm the county's agriculture extension agent. At least that's how I normally introduce myself, but for the first few months of when I was working when I started this job, uh, people refer to me as the bug guy. Um, and that's because I finished my master's degree in entomology, which is the study of insects. And I worked in a vegetable field. Um, so with that today, I'll be presenting something I'm familiar with, and that's insect pests in the garden. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, I'm going to go through it pretty quickly so we can show you a lot of examples of insects you might see. Um, but just type it down in the chat. Uh, and I'll answer that whether you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook. Um, if you're watching this recorded, just shoot me an email and you'll find my email in our description. We've got our website in there, the link to that. We've also got other links in there to our social media and evaluation uh, that we hope you all will fill out. And then I've got one for the 2020 North Carolina Ag Chem Manual. Um, that's just as a reference in case you uh, see some of these insects and you maybe want to spray an insecticide. I'm not going to talk too much about insecticides today. Um, just know that there are some out there that will uh, get rid of these insects for you. We also have a video on pesticide safety. Uh, if you're interested in that, um, that will help you to spray properly and safely. Uh, so with that, we're going to go ahead and get started. This is how I like to present all my slides with an overview so you know what to expect. Uh, and with that, I'm going to start with a little disclaimer. If you don't like creepy crawly things like insects, spiders, uh, that kind of thing, uh, then this might not be the presentation for you because uh, we're going to have a lot of pictures of insects. Most of them aren't too bad. Uh, the worst ones are going to be right at the beginning if you're uh, not a fan of spiders. But the things we're going to talk about are what is an insect because it's important to be able to determine if what you see that looks creepy and crawly is an insect the first thing that you need to do is identify uh, what the thing is, and then you can figure out how to get rid of it. So we're going to talk about that, and we'll talk about how to ID different types of insects that look really similar. So things like caterpillars and grubs look really similar, and if you can tell them apart, that rules out a whole lot of different insects. And then we're going to go uh, by vegetable type, and I'll just list a lot of insects. I'll talk about uh, what they are, how to get rid of them, when you're going to see them, that sort of thing. I'm going to go pretty quickly because there's a lot of insects and a lot of vegetables. And my goal for this presentation was that you'd have this resource and maybe you listen to it one time. And then when you're gardening in the summer, uh, maybe you see something that looks familiar and you can go back to the video and figure out how to get rid of it. Uh, so with that, we're going to jump in uh, to what is an insect. And this is the first image um, of something that looks a lot like an insect. Spiders are something that a lot of people say, well, is it an insect? They're hard, they've got a lot of legs like an insect, they crawl around like an insect. So what actually makes something an insect? And for us, what I'm gonna say is that they have three pairs of legs. So that's six legs total. They have two sets of wings and that's all insects. And then they have three body segments. They have a head, a thorax where their legs and their wings attach, and then they have an abdomen. Now I can already see some people saying, well, not all insects have wings, what about ants? And that's true, ants don't have wings, not all ants. But ants are kind of weird because they're in a caste system where they have workers, they have a queen, sometimes they have drones or soldiers. And so somewhere in that caste system, one of those members will have wings. Uh, so for us, all insects have wings. And this is a great way to determine if what you're looking at is an insect. Now, what I recommend if you're not comfortable picking up insects or anything like that, put them in a, a Ziploc bag or something that's clear. And that way you can get a closer look at it without it going all over the place. So when we go back to the spider, they're not an insect because, well, for two reasons. One, they have uh, eight legs instead of six. And sometimes that's hard to tell because they have little things that maybe don't look like a leg or the tiny thing is too tiny for you to see its legs. Um, but also spiders only have two body segments. So they have their head and their thorax is fused together and they have an abdomen. So what about this one? Is this an insect? This is another creepy looking thing. Uh, this one's actually a beneficial insect. It has six legs, but it's kind of hard to tell how many body segments it has, and it's hard to tell its wings. Um, so the best thing to do, like I said, is put it in a clear bag, and hopefully you'll be able to see it's got three body segments. It's got its head, the thorax where its legs attach, and then its abdomen. It's hard to find the wings on this, but they're on 
on the abdomen over laying over top of it. What about a caterpillar? So caterpillars by our definition where they only have six legs don't seem to fit, right? Because if you look at a caterpillar, I've highlighted it here, they've got a ton of legs. Um, but caterpillars are insects. They don't have wings yet, but they'll become a moth or a butterfly and they'll have their wings there. Uh, but really those first pair of legs beside the head, and I'm not sure how that's gonna show up on our screen if it's the one on the left. Um, but anyways, those are its real legs. They're hard when it goes to become a moth or a butterfly, it's gonna keep those legs. The ones in the back are called pro legs and they're really just kind of a fleshy part of it. It's almost like it acts like a leg, um, but it's not hard, so they're not real legs. Um, so caterpillars are an insect. And this is really why identifying insects is so tough because it seems like there's so many exceptions to the rules. I mean, something as simple as a caterpillar doesn't quite seem like it fits under our rules. So uh, hopefully this presentation will help you get a little bit more familiar with identifying some common insect pests. And that was kind of the goal because there's so many outliers and things like that out there. So if you have any questions on that now, uh, what is an insect, our basic definition, um, you can go ahead and type them in the chat. I tried to stay real basic with it. There's a lot of other things that need to be included in the description, um, but it doesn't look like we have anything right now. I'll answer them again later uh, if you can think of anything. But now we're gonna talk about IDing insects that look really similar uh, to other types of insects and why that is important in your garden. So the first group is caterpillars versus grubs. Uh, a grub is just an immature uh, beetle. So all of these grubs will become some sort of beetle. The things they have in common is they're really soft, squishy, they're kind of fleshy, but they have a hard head. Um, so you can see, hopefully in the bottom images of those insects, they have a little hard head. They all have chewing mouth parts. So they're gonna be chewing leaves, stems, roots, that sort of thing. Um, so it can be hard to differentiate based off of what is feeding in your garden if all you can see is a chewed on leaf, if it was a caterpillar, if it was a grub. And the last thing, uh, which is kind of cool and maybe some people won't think about is that they feed on a different food source when they're an adult versus when they're uh, immature or when they're a larvae. So if you think about a caterpillar, they feed mostly on leaves. And then when they become a moth or a butterfly, they feed on the flowers. Uh, so that's pretty cool. They feed on two different areas. Uh, so just look for that. Now, how do you tell them apart? Caterpillars, like I said before, have those uh, fleshy pro legs in the back. And so those uh, are only gonna be found on caterpillars. If you find something that's white and you flip it over and it doesn't have those, uh, then it's likely gonna be a grub. And they all produce silk and that's what they use to make their cocoons uh, when they go to become a moth or a butterfly. Beetles, on the other hand, uh, only have those six legs in the front by their head, uh, or they have no legs. And so that's how you differentiate between the two. And it's really important in your garden because you need to know uh, what kind of control measures you can have if you have caterpillars versus beetles. So things like BT, which is an organic insecticide, only kills caterpillars, and it's not gonna work if you have grubs. So that's the first group. The second group is beetles versus bugs. And bugs, are not a generic term to be used across all insects. It's a specific type of insect. Um, and the way to describe them is that they're immatures, uh, look like they're adults. They're called nymphs. So if you think of a stink bug, that's a true bug. Um, if you've ever seen a small stink bug without wings, that's the immature. So it looks a lot like the adult. They have uh, wings that's kind of a covered leathery look to it. and if you can see the image there in the center and the bottom, that blackish brown bug, um, that's a bug and you can see the teardrop shape, that's where its wings are. And then they have piercing sucking mouth parts. And if you look at the stink bug that's flipped over there with the red circle, that's trying to highlight its mouth part. It's kind of like a mosquito. So they pierce into things like um, plants and then they suck out the juices of them. Uh, so that's a bug. There's relatively few out there uh, compared to most insects. Beetles on the other hand, uh, have a hard covering throughout them. Uh, they have chewing mouth parts, so they're gonna be chewing on leaves. Uh, and the immatures don't look like adults, so the immature is gonna be a grub. So those are the differences. The things they have in common is the adults can fly. So if you go up to something in the garden and it flies off, it might be a bug or a beetle. Um, the immatures can't fly. And then the, uh, they can be beneficial or pests. So a lot of people think of bugs as being all pests. Uh, but there are some stink bugs that are predatory, so they'll eat other 
uh, insects. And there's some beetles that are pests uh, and not beneficial. And we'll talk about some of those today. So those are the distinction between two different groups, between beetles and bugs, and then caterpillars and grubs. Uh, if you have any questions about those, type them down in the chat or shoot me an email if you're watching this uh, recorded. Before we get on to our last section, and this one is really quick, so it seems like uh, the video has gone on for a little while now, um, but this next part is going to go by quickly. Uh, so we do have a question or really a comment. Somebody says about the term bug was slang, um, but and it is a lot of people will say, oh, well, this bug, this bug, but uh, no bug is a, a specific group. And a lot of things that we actually call bugs, like a ladybug is actually a beetle. Uh, which is kind of interesting. I don't know who named these, if it was entomologists, uh, which is kind of bad on our part. Uh, for, it's just people. But we're going to get to this last section now. We're going to talk about uh, different insects that feed on different crops. And this is how I'm going to have it set up. So I'll talk about uh, a vegetable. So we're going to start with sweet corn and then maybe four or five insects that feed on it. I'll show you a picture of all of those insects or the damage uh, from that insect. And I'll talk about control. Um, some of them cross over and I'll try to mention those as well. And the way that I'm hoping to present it is that we'll start at the top with insects that feed on the seedlings or underground, that kind of thing. And then we'll work up all the way to mature plants and then the fruit on those plants. So for sweet corn, we have things like bill bugs, which again is not a bug, it's a beetle. Uh, we have cutworm, brown stink bug, and corn earworm are your main pests. So this is a picture of a bill bug. Um, it's a little beetle. It's brownish black, uh, usually about the size of a grain of rice. And they have that long nose on them, kind of like an elephant's trunk. Uh, you likely won't see these. It's a type of weevil, um, in case you've ever seen an insect that looks like this before. But these mostly stay in the soil. They feed on corn seedlings. Um, and so if you plant corn in the same spot year after year, you're likely to have issues with these. Um, and what it'll look like is your corn will get about that tall, which is maybe four inches. And uh, you'll start to notice holes through the stem, or maybe you'll have seeds that don't come up. The best thing to do is just rotate where you put your crop. Um, if you have seeds that are treated, corn seeds that are treated with an insecticide uh, will kill these insects. Uh, but another thing you can do is just replant your corn. Uh, usually they won't be an enormous problem where you have no corn come up. You'll just be missing three or four here or there. Um, and because it's such a short time for corn to get that tall, you have plenty of opportunity to replant a couple corn plants or a couple corn seeds in there. So that's bill bugs. Uh, you might see a couple of them. I don't have a picture of cutworm um, because they're really just a green, brown, black color uh, worm or caterpillar. Um, they're fairly small and you probably won't see them, but this is what you'll notice in your garden is that your corn plants have been cut as the name suggests. Um, they'll be cut somewhere in the stem and they'll be falling over. For the most part, it's corn plants that are less than eight inches tall, um, but sometimes can get up to about a foot and a half. Um, they're really common in areas where you don't do a lot of tilling of the soil. They like to stay in the corn stalks and stuff like that. So if you grow a lot of sweet corn, go ahead and remove those stalks, put them in a compost pile to let them break down and then heavily till them into your soil. And that should get rid of most of them for you. But just like bill bugs, uh, it affects mostly young corn. So you might be able to replant in a couple areas if you start to notice this damage. If you have really heavy damage that looks like this, it's a chance that it's something else like a mammal, something like a rat or muskrat, um, groundhogs do that kind of thing too. So um, that's it for cutworms. They're usually not a huge pest and there's not a lot you can do for them because they come out at night. Um, so it's hard to treat them with insecticides and things, but rotating your crop again will help for cutworms. The next one is the brown stink bug. And uh, if I had a great control for this pest, I'd be making a lot of money because it's, it's a big one, uh, not only for gardeners, but for farmers too. It causes a lot of damage. Uh, it's pretty easy to identify. Most people know what stink bugs look like. This one's brown. Uh, there's not that many brown stink bugs out there. Um, the one thing to identify it from the beneficial stink bug that's brown is it's green on the underside. So that's how you know it's a pest. The two main times you want to look for this are right when those seeds are coming up. Um, so when it's about three to four inches, the stink bug will go in there and feed uh, on the stem and it'll make it twist 
and that'll cause damage. So you can replant your corn then. Um, you can remove the stink bugs by hand if you find them. That's a great time to get rid of them. And then the other thing is once the uh, ears of corn are about that big. So go in after your corn has started to tassel, start to look for your ears um, because the stink bug will feed then and it'll make the, the ears grow like a banana. So they'll grow kind of crooked and you'll have issues with your pollination. Um, so you won't get really good kernels. You won't get good ears of corn. So uh, those are the big times to look for a stink bug. You'll want to remove them if you can find them. Uh, one place to look is where the leaf attaches to the stem. It makes a little cup, and I don't know if I can make the shape, but it's kind of a cup shape on the stem. That's where the stink bug will be, and you can just push it, push the leaf to the stem, and it'll crush them. That's a great way to get rid of them and to find them, especially in the warmer parts of the day. They'll probably be there. Um, hiding from the sun. So that stink bug, they're really a pain to get rid of, but those two times are the best times to look for them uh, for your corn to try to get some control. And this one is the last one for corn. And if you've ever grown corn or uh, had corn that your neighbor's grown, you've probably seen these. This is corn earworm. Uh, it, like the stink suggests, feeds on the ear of the corn. Um, and what happens is a moth lays an egg on the silks and then the caterpillar hatches, goes and eats from the tip um, all the way down. Most of the time, they don't make it all the way down to the end, so you'll have at least half of an ear of corn. Um, and there's usually only one in each ear because they're pretty ferocious, they eat each other. Um, with that being said, they will also bite you, so uh, don't mess around with them too much. Uh, control for these is hard because uh, they're feeding inside the corn, so you can't spray them with insecticides very well. Uh, but what you can do is plant your corn earlier. And the earlier you plant it, the less of these you'll have because they're mostly coming from the south. They're mostly migrating north uh, throughout the summer. So the earlier you can plant your corn, the better luck you'll have. Um, that being said, the later you plant it, the more you'll have. Um, so that's corn earworm. It's kind of one of those things you just have to live with in this area. Um, but you can still have fairly successful corn uh, with few corn earworms if you plant pretty early in the year. So that's corn. We're going to move on to beans now. And there's really, there's a lot of pests for beans. So stink bugs feed on them too, which I didn't include corn earworm as well. Um, but these are four that we haven't talked about. Those being aphids, bean leaf beetle. And then I'm kind of going to group together the caterpillars, which are green clover worm and soybean looper. So this is aphids. Um, these are black bean aphids. They, speak, they feed on beans. They're black in color. Um, the way to find them is to look for sticky stuff on the leaves. That's honeydew that's produced by uh, these aphids because they feed on the stems and they can't process all the sugar, so they shoot it out their backside um, and then mold grows on it. So if you see anything that's sticky or mold, uh, you probably have aphids. Um, and so you just want to look underneath the plant leaves for these. Um, the best thing to do is not spray anything on them. If you can wait about 10 to 14 days, um, insects will come along and eat them because they're basically just little squishy sacks of sugar. Uh, so everything likes to eat them. And if you can wait about 10 to 14 days, that's your best control. We did a lot of studies when I was in school on aphids, and we'd go out and flag different leaves that had aphids on them, and we'd come back a few days later and there'd be no aphids because ladybugs would come in and eat them. Uh, or other insects. So if you can wait, uh, that's probably the best way to get rid of them. Horticultural oils will work as well. The big issue is your aphids usually don't uh, start to have high populations until the middle to end of the summer. And by that time, it's too hot to use oils uh, because you'll damage the plant, it'll burn the plant. Um, so you'll end up doing more harm that way. So just uh, be careful if you are gonna be applying horticultural oils for aphids. Next one is a bean leaf beetle. Um, this one is usually not a problem, but if you get a lot of them, uh, they can be really serious. They're kind of this copper, uh, orangish yellow color with some black spots. Um, they're fairly large, about the size of your pinky nail or index finger uh, nail. They're about that size and they feed mostly on the leaves. Uh, they can feed on the pods as well. And like I said, usually you only have four or five, so that's not an issue. The problem is once you've had beans in the same area multiple years, uh, you, might get you might get large populations if you don't uh, control these. A lot of insecticides work, but one thing with your beans is you wanna make sure that you're removing any foliage that is maybe 
uh, blocking out sunlight. You want to try to get airflow in there for your beans. And this is true for tomatoes too. And I'll talk about that, I think, in the next slot, in the next uh, vegetable plants. But you want airflow. You want a lot of light in there. That kind of prevents insects. They don't really like to be in areas that have a lot of light and heat. Um, so that'll help to reduce your numbers. And then for these, you can look for their eggs and remove those. They're going to be a yellowish color. Um, so you can look for those in your beans. But like I said, most of the time, these aren't a big pest. What's usually a bigger pest are your caterpillars. There's green clover worm, soybean looper, uh, cornea worm. They're really just green caterpillars that feed on leaves. Um, soybeans can tolerate a lot of, or beans can tolerate a lot of defoliation, soybeans as well. Um, but about 50% is really what you can expect and you still won't have any problem with your beans. Uh, and 50% defoliation looks like a lot. So um, with that being said, the way to control these is with a pesticide I've already talked about, BT. It's organic, comes from a bacteria and kills only caterpillars. The one caveat is you want to use it when your caterpillars are one inch uh, or shorter. Once they start to get really big, then it doesn't work quite as well. Um, but you can tolerate quite a few of these before your beans really have an issue. And the same goes with the, um, the bean leaf beetle. You can tolerate a lot of feeding before you have an issue. Now we're going to move on to tomatoes. Uh, tomatoes have quite a few insects that feed actually on the tomato and not quite as many that feed on the leaves. Um, but really for tomatoes, your biggest issue usually is diseases. But the insects that feed are flea beetles, the brown stink bug and corn earworm, which we talked about before, and tomato hornworm. I'm not really going to focus on the stink bug or the corn earworm. Um, they both feed on the tomatoes themselves, and they're really hard to get rid of and to kill. So you can remove them by hand. If you have a lot of light penetration into your tomatoes, you'll have better uh, better chances of having low populations. But we'll start with flea beetles. This is what they look like. They're about the size of a pinhead. Um, I know this isn't a tomato leaf, but this is more or less what their damage looks like. It's a tiny hole that they're called shot holes. That's how they feed on the leaves. And they're not an issue except for when you have transplants. Um, so your transplants for about the first four weeks are really susceptible to flea beetles um, because they can do rapid defoliation pretty quickly. Uh, like the name suggests, flea beetles, they jump like fleas and then they fly off. Uh, so that's one way to tell if you have flea beetles. But the best way to control them is to uh, change the, the soil or till up the soil pretty good under where you're going to have your tomatoes or rotate your crop. But also you can put row covers uh, around your crops for the first four weeks, and that'll help to, to keep these uh, insects off of them. You can also spray insecticides. These are pretty easy to kill. This one is probably one that you've seen if you've ever grown tomatoes. This is tomato hornworm. It's fairly large. They can get anywhere probably between three to five inches or so in length. Um, and this picture here is my favorite picture for how to control them. Uh, those little white things are cocoons for a parasitic wasp. And it's not a wasp like you're used to, not a big paper wasp or a hornet or yellow jacket. Uh, they're very, very tiny. They almost look like flies and they only lay eggs in usually one or two insects. So this one lays its eggs inside this caterpillar um, and then it develops and forms those cocoons. And that's the best way to control them that I've seen uh, without insecticides. Um, we used to do a lot of studies on these and we go searching through tomatoes for them and 90% of the, the caterpillars we found had these cocoons and we couldn't use them. So if you start to notice these in your garden, take the caterpillars off of your tomatoes and put them in, in a compost pile or something like that, because they'll still feed, uh, but they'll eventually die off. And then you'll have that population of these wasps. And that's a really, really beneficial thing to have in your garden when you're growing tomatoes. Now, if you want to find these, um, usually there aren't that many in your tomatoes because the moth will only lay one egg at a time. Now, when I say not that many, uh, what I mean is anywhere between 10 to 20 uh, for maybe three or four tomato plants. Um, so that's really not a lot compared to some of the other vegetables where you can have 100 caterpillars on one plant. Um, but you can find them, I've been told, by using UV light um, at night. I've never tried that. Um, but usually you'll find a few of them per tomato plant, um, and then you can remove them. BT works as well. Um, but the caterpillars have to be really small. So you have to make sure you're monitoring your plants and then make sure you get good coverage when you spray that. 
So now we're going to get on to our last vegetable group. Um, it seems like quite a lot of vegetables, squash, cucumbers, and watermelons. Um, it also includes pumpkins and gourds, but these are all really similar plants and they have the same pests that feed on them. Those being cucumber beetles, squash bugs, squash vine borer, and squash beetles. So cucumber beetle is a big one. It feeds uh, pretty much throughout the year. It's this yellow kind of green color um, and they have black spots or stripes on them. Now they're about the size of your index fingernail and uh, you can find large populations. They don't do a lot of damage, but they spread a disease that causes your plants to wilt. Um, and so the best thing you can do, uh, there's a lot of insecticides that will work. If you don't wanna do that, they're attracted to the flowers, that kind of yellowish orange color that those plants have. Um, and so if you have sticky cards, they'll be attracted to that color too. That'll work a little bit. Um, row covers will also work for these. You just have to make sure that you open up those row covers once you start to get flowers on the plants so they can be pollinated. The next one is squash bug. Um, it's similar to stink bugs, they do stink, um, but it is a true bug. And a lot like stink bugs, they're kind of hard to control. Uh, the one thing that's nice about squash bugs and stink bugs is when they lay their eggs, it takes them anywhere between four to six days to hatch. So that gives you a lot of time to go out and look for these eggs and remove them. And that's the best way to lower your populations. Because if you're rotating your crops every year, um, you won't have too many from the previous year of these squash bugs. You maybe have 10 to 20 in your garden. And if you can get rid of those and prevent those eggs from hatching, uh, you'll really lower your population. You only have to go out about twice a week because you have four to six days of grace period. And their eggs are a copper color, which is really uh, easy to find on the squash plants. Squash leaves are big. I mean, for your zucchini, they can be huge. Um, so go and look for these copper colored eggs. The one caveat is if the eggs are black or um, a black color, that means that they're either dead or they've been parasitized. So you can go ahead and leave those. Um, but finding eggs is really an easy way to control these. There are some insecticides that work as well. Um, so you can do that if you're interested in spraying insecticides. This one is a real pain and maybe some of you haven't seen it, but you've heard of it. This is a squash vine borer. It's a moth that looks like a wasp. Um, it's trying to imitate a wasp so nothing messes with it. And it's really hard to control because it lays its eggs in the base of a plant and then the larvae eat into the stem and kill the plant that way. And it's hard to control because you can't kill that larvae uh, inside the plant. So you can only control the adults, which is difficult because they fly around. Uh, they're not always common in the area. So you might only see them once a day and they've already done that damage. Uh, so the best thing to do is to put down uh, a row cover or something like that, and you'll get some control. You can also, if you start to notice plants that are deteriorating, go ahead and remove them. Um, squash get a lot of diseases, whether it's bacterial um, or these insects. And so if you remove them, you're going to reduce that uh, population that you have in your garden. So hopefully you'll have some plants that survive. And this is our last insect. It looks a lot like a lady beetle. Uh, because it's a type of lady beetle that's a pest. This is the squash beetle. It's fairly large in size um, and is kind of a copper orange color. Uh, they usually don't feed too heavily on squash unless you get a lot of them. Um, you can pick them off by hand because they're not very quick. They're kind of clumsy. Um, and if you want, you can pick off their eggs too if you start to get high populations. That's the easiest way to control them without insecticides, but there's a lot of insecticides that will control these too. So those are our insects on our vegetable pests. I didn't cover um, all of the vegetables. I focused mostly on the ones that we have uh, currently this time of year, uh, winter or summer warm season vegetables. Um, I left out things like peppers because they're really similar to tomatoes. And uh, so some of these you might find crossing over uh, between your different vegetables, but hopefully um, if you're out in your garden and you start to notice some of these, uh, you can come back to this video and learn a little bit more. If you do have any questions, type them down in the chat. Uh, of course, you can email me at any time if you find some weird insects. Uh, send me a picture and I'll help to identify them for you and tell you how to get rid of them. If that's what you're interested in. Um, but also, uh, if you have some time, fill out our evaluation. It'll only take a couple minutes and we really use that information 
uh, to make classes like this one. This is one that was suggested, uh, a class on the insect pests in our garden. It doesn't look like we have any questions now. Um, so if you have, uh, if you have the time tomorrow, stay tuned at 11.30 from Live from Curry Tech Extension, we'll be doing an Instapot cooking class with Olivia, uh, our FCS agent. Uh, so that's all we have for today. Thanks for tuning in to Live from Curry Tech Extension.